All right, so we're here to answer one question. Can I use a bomb, bill of materials, or a series of bombs to threat model a system? I think we've all heard a lot about software bill of materials here at this event in the SBOM Pavilion. There's a bunch of vendors up there talking about this. Uh, it's been all over the news. Um, but what, what is a bill of materials? So SBOM, OK describes the software, what are the ingredients in the software, um, helps us identify if it's gonna be dangerous for us, but the topic of a bill of materials is much bigger than just S-bombs. We've been using bombs for years in manufacturing. Uh, we use bombs uh, it, many times in a site construction projects to identify everything that goes into the site. Uh, from a hardware standpoint, we can use bombs to link objects together, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about the linkage of these different kinds of bombs as we, as we explore this topic. Uh, from firmware, hardware, software, uh, and there's a bunch of value that comes out of this. Um, uh, obviously, the vulnerability use case is what we hear about the most, but we're here to talk about a lot more than just vulnerabilities. Okay? So first off, I want to talk about system. What is a system? How do I define a system? So uh, I asked in the Whova app a question prior to, uh, prior to this talk. Um, what is a system? How do you define a system? Is it what the system is, the components, all the pieces that go into it. Is it what a system does? Is it the behaviors of the system, the network connections, the services that it consumes? Or is it the value of the system, the business value of the system? Uh, what I overwhelmingly received a response on from almost everybody, probably 60 to 70% of the respondents was what the system does. However, we look at build materials the way we think of it today is what is the system, what goes into it? So let's kind of pull on that thread a little bit as we go through this and talk a little bit more about what a system does, okay? So this talk is specifically around the bill of materials concepts that we're gonna to explore today are predicated upon the assumption that we're talking about the Cyclone DX bill of materials standard. Now, all this stuff started from a software bill of materials standpoint, but Cyclone DX has blown way beyond the use cases of SBOM. I, I tend to think of it as a system descriptor language because Cyclone DX incorporates things like hardware, um, uh, hardware specifications, uh, uh, hardware building materials, uh, FCC ID, uh, radio identification, uh, GTIN tags, U UPCs, like all, all this stuff that's kind of uh, typically seen in a hardware specification uh, along with that correlation with the software, it describes services, it describes assembly. So maybe I don't have uh, visibility into the unique component, but I have an assembly of components. Uh, it's very common in manufacturing. Uh, I buy an assembly of parts. I don't know all the parts that are in it, but I know that I bought an assembly of parts from upstream. Um, and Cyclone DX really kind of moved way beyond even description of this thing. Uh, there, there's, we're going to talk about future state, and we're going to talk about what's coming as well within the Cyclone DX uh, specification. I'm going to talk very briefly about consequences-driven cyber-informed engineering. Many of you may know that I'm a strong advocate of the cyber-informed engineering approach, uh, but I want to laser in on step two of uh, CCE, uh, C, uh, CIE approaches uh, that's really about systems of system mapping. And that's really what we're diving into today is an understanding of the system, understanding the dependencies, the security defenses, all the relationships that make up that system, and how does the system function and interoperate. So this winds up being very core to this, and it also maps uh, to the digital asset awareness domain or principle of CIE as well. Okay? So here's a generic attack tree, right? I, uh, I have an objective, I want to compromise an end system. Um, again, this very generic look at things, like. Uh, attack trees are very useful to kind of understand alternate attack paths to get to an end targeted objective. Very useful to understand what is the most likely approach that an adversary is going to take, what's the easiest way. There's an, econ there's an e economics factor uh, to attacks against our systems. Uh, the adversaries aren't going to blow a zero day if they don't have to. If you have a missing patch, if there's a trust relationship that uh, is in place that can facilitate this attack, they're always going to take the easiest path available to them. Uh, and you know whether they're trying to remain undetected or just trying to get to the end system quickest and easiest, that's the path they're gonna take. All right, so how does a bomb help me do this? Well, 
First off, the concept of a SaaS bomb or a software as a services bomb. And I'm gonna get deeper into the concept of a SaaS bomb later, but this winds up being the bomb type that is most useful when we use in threat modeling. Like typically when I think about uh, uh, a threat modeling exercise, I'm identifying all the interaction points. How can I interact with the system? Where, where's the, where's the uh, attack surface? What is the exposure? How's the attacker gonna achieve certain objectives? Um, and the really interesting things about a SAS bomb is a SAS bomb, a lot of people think that it describes a software as a service application. It doesn't. It is not the software stack for your SaaS application. But what it does describe is services, API endpoints, right? So how does traffic move back and forth? Well, that also lets us do things like establish uh, and define a trust relationship. So if the jump post is the only way to get past the firewall into my end system, a SAS bomb can help me understand that. Well, then I also want to, in my attack flow, okay, I understand I have, I have uh, a path to get to my end system. Well, how do I compromise the targets along that path? The S bomb, uh, as we all know, very good at identifying vulnerabilities that can help us understand where we have an issue with uh, you know, a, a, de a dependency or a component that has a known vulnerability. Uh, and we can pull on that thread to understand, okay, how do I, you know, how do I compromise this jump post to ultimately get to my target. And for a non-digital non based attack, we, we can use this approach for physical attacks as well. So if I have an end system uh, that has physical characteristics, a, a lock that can be bypassed, if I can achieve my objective by going to go break into the substation and bypass the lock and knock out the piece of hardware that's ultimately going to cause the consequence that I'm trying to accomplish, then Maybe the H-bomb gives me the visibility to know, hey, I know that I have a defect in this particular locking mechanism that's very easy for an adversary to bypass. Forget all this digital stuff. I'm gonna go the old school route and I'm gonna go attack things physically. So the bomb has given me a lot of visibility into understanding what can I do to achieve my end state objective. So again, uh, software bill and materials. Here's an example of a software bill and materials. Uh, these are all JSON representations of software bill and materials information. Uh, I think a lot of us have seen some of this information. There's a bunch of great tools out there, both commercial and open source capabilities uh, to uh, capture information about a software bill and materials. There's a lot of really good data beyond just the vulnerability. Uh, we can get hashes and other information that can be used to map to indicators of compromise. I may take a hash of a component and look it up in a malware database and say, oh wow, you know, uh, I don't need to compromise this thing. My software is already compromised. Um, uh, along with other trust characteristics. Uh, and once we start stitching this together with these other bomb types, it gets really, really interesting. Okay? Uh, the, uh, from a hardware bill of materials as well, as I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, here's an example of a hardware bill of materials as defined in the Cyclone DX specification. Um, on its own, if we're just looking at the hardware, it's very interesting, and we can look at some physical characteristics of it. There's some other interesting things that we can do here with like an FCC ID. I can go look up an FCC ID on the FCC website that comes from a, from a hardware bill of materials, and I can start to identify through a documentation-based exercise uh, some of the likely characteristics to carry out. I can get things like frequency information that I might use with like an SDR style attack if I'm looking to attack the system. Um, again, I haven't even, I'm not even talking about the software. I just got some information about the hardware that I can use to facilitate an attack uh, with some other research and open source uh, intelligence mechanisms. Um, and the SAS bomb, as I mentioned, um, service, APIs. Uh, we can define any endpoint in a SAS bomb. Well, any endpoint that has a socket based. Uh, connection, right? So it's a little, a little more challenging to model things like serial-based connections and things like that, but it, if it's running IP, it's pretty easy to define that in a SAS bomb. The thing that gets really interesting, and, and I, and I kind of neglected this earlier when I talked about the definition of a system, the one thing that was probably missing in my definition of a system is data, right? Data is important, but this, but this actually helps us identify the directionality of a data flow. Is it you know, as we start talking about like unidirectional gateways and, and uh, how traffic moves across the network, what traffic is moving across the network? Is it telemetry data? Is it PII? Is it something else that's interesting to an attacker, right? All of that can be defined uh, here in this model. We can look at authentication. 
We can look at encryption. Um, all these attributes of how all our different pieces of software are connected together uh, can be defined in a software as a service bill of materials. Okay. One area that is really interesting, and I think uh, you know, with the advent of GPT and AI and all these things, um, we start thinking about, well, how does this change our world, and how does the introduction of logic uh, contribute to the definition of behavior? Right. So one of the things that is coming, it is not here yet. I believe it is coming uh, probably in the next few months from the Cyclone DX team is a concept of an ML bomb. Not a logic bomb, like things are gonna, bad things are gonna happen, but more the concept of machine learning, logic understanding, and how those decisions are made, and what kinds of models are in place inside your software that can give a lot more depth to the understanding of how our software works. The other thing that I think is really, really interesting, and we haven't really pulled on this thread yet, but can we also look at things like the logic in a PLC? to give us some indications of what is the system behavior going to look like um, as we go uh, you know, and explore the logic represented, representative in a system, okay? We have some other opportunities. Uh, IBM recently released a thing called a C-bomb. Now, all these bombs get really, really confusing from the acronyms because at one point in time, C-bomb meant a cyber bomb, which a cyber bomb at one point meant that it was a H bomb and an S bomb put together. That was a that was a C bomb. Um, uh, even when we talk about uh, uh, S bombs, like before, people were talking about software bill of materials. People were talking about sales bill of materials, right? So uh, it can be a little challenging as, as these acronyms get thrown out by the industry, understanding what we're talking about. So definitely apply some context as you're exploring the conversation. Uh, but the C-bomb, as IBM defined it, is a, is a cryptographic bomb. So think about, um, you know, Heartbleed and some of the other, uh, like, SSL-based attacks. Like, what if we could define and understand the implementation of crypto um, as an SSL crypto, not like blockchain stuff, uh, on a system as a result in a bomb? Maybe I don't need much more detail on the system other than, to just know how, uh, which ciphers are implemented and uh, what, what's, my, what's my vulnerability to, to those style attacks. That can be very useful um, for, from a C-bomb standpoint. Okay? Uh, the other areas that, we're, that are kind of being expanded on um, with the advent of like no-code and low-code based applications, um, be really nice to be able to identify what is going into my software. It's a black box. It's all drag and drop and pull the things together and I don't really know what that means. Like what components are actually in my software when I use a, you know, a bubble or a Xeno or something like that. Um, uh, this is another challenge that is being solved for uh, uh, in, in the very, very near future uh, to start to, to, to gain better understanding of these things. Okay. Now, that's cool that we have all these bomb types. But what do we do with them, right? Like, how do, how do I gain any kind of aggregate understanding of what's going on with all these bill of materials? Well, there's a concept, and SPDX has a concept of bomb linking as well, but uh, it does not include a lot of the other bomb types that we're talking about. SPDX is largely a software bill of materials uh, approach. Um, but the concept of a bomb link allows us to create some connective tissue between these bombs and create relationships between components. Now, uh, the, the, the model and approach in Cyclone DX is in existence today to link these bombs together uh, through uh, these URN um, uh, addresses uh, and creating these reference models between bomb to bomb. Uh, it's also very useful to link bombs to other artifacts. So I may have an artifact from my build system that I want to link with my SBOM as well. Not everything is about bombs, right? So I may have a build artifact that says, hey, the build system that was used to compile my code was done so on an image that was sticked, right? So I have a, a good configuration management information that is uh, useful to be able to understand the security environment that my, that my code was, was built on. Um, and we can also have other supply chain artifacts. Uh, everything in the pipeline, um, there are other tools in the industry that are used, uh, things like Intoto, and there's some good vendors out there that are looking at these attestation pipelines to help understand how these things work. But 
part of the challenge uh, as we do this and we link these bombs together, um, sometimes the data gets a little messy. There are some tools out there to do this. The Cyclone DX CLI tool will do this. Um, but right now, a lot of the aggregation tools are doing almost like a diff side-by-side -side comparison of two things. Uh, and if it makes sense, as it goes down the tree of all the objects, it'll stitch it together. Sometimes you'll get duplicates. Sometimes you'll lose dependencies. Uh, uh, I've seen in, in recent versions of some of this tooling, does a really good job of aggregating and, and deduplicating you know, the information from bomb one to bomb two. But then we had a dependency tree, a dependency graph, in both bombs, but once we stitched together, we lost our dependency mapping information, and, and that's not ideal. Uh, we're working on some tooling to solve that problem. Unfortunately, I did not get that ready uh, in time for this presentation. I was hoping to release that this week, um, but that, that will be forthcoming, okay? But right now, this, uh, it's, this is requiring some manual analysis to get at this information. Uh, and, and the last thing I really wanted to mention is if we're trying to do this work and do some threat modeling in code using all this information, obviously aggregating the data is step one. Processing the information is kind of step two. So there's an OWASP project called PyTM, which is a Python-based library to essentially do threat modeling as code. There are other folks that have come up with approaches. Arius Risk is a commercial product uh, that's done this, and they've open sourced their open threat model, uh, threat modeling document standard. Uh, that they use to provide some capabilities here to do threat modeling as code. But it's really interesting when we can take advantage of other existing uh, capabilities like the full KPEC uh, attack pattern support um, and pulling uh, in all this CWE information that is very helpful to us. Uh, there are ongoing efforts in industry to align CWE closer to the industrial control system space um, and start to look at CWEs that are more meaningful uh, for all of our industrial operators out there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, beyond PyTM, and you go download this uh, off of GitHub or go to OWASP and, and, and get, uh, get a hold of this thing and play with it. Um, we also have uh, other capabilities, things like, um, uh, like Graphis, which is a dot language-based graphing library. Uh, I use it quite a bit to do lots of different things, and we can create data flow diagrams with it, we can create attack trees with it, pretty much uh, any kind of diagramming that you can think of that might be useful in your threat modeling process uh, can be used here. Uh, I went through an exercise a few weeks ago just to ask ChatGPT, hey, ChatGPT, can you generate me a threat model for X? And then spit that out in a dot language uh, kind of model. So we could theoretically take all this information about the bombs and turn that, translate that into information that we could ask generative AI systems to then translate that into a dot language graph and then translate that through GraphViz and get some nice pretty diagrams, okay. So I kind of close it up with like another question, like wouldn't it be great if we could just get the data to do all this? I mean, there's some really cool things that we can do here, but our current obstacle right now in industry, let's be clear, is where do these bombs come from? How do we get them? Uh, again, we have some great vendors here that are trying to solve those problems. I think ideally we would like to get them from the suppliers themselves, and this is gonna require that all of you asset owners start communicating uh, these requests to your suppliers, start building this into your contracting language. Uh, ultimately, that's what's gonna drive uh, this industry forward. Um, and then obviously, in the meantime, we have all these fine folks that are doing reverse engineering and, and other techniques to produce uh, bomb information uh, from a hardware standpoint, lots of folks we have people that are doing like hardware teardowns. Uh, we have other software, solu software security solutions out there like the interactive security testing tools that uh, are mining those API calls inside your application is running. So there's lots of ways to get at this information, um, but I, I, I think we're at a point of maturity in industry there where we're, we're, we're not quite there yet, um, but this is where things are headed or this is my vision of kind of where things are headed. So any questions? <laughs>